information and interviews from people who have impacted lives, their strengths and how they face their challenges can educate and inspire us to make better decisions in our own lives. Today, our guest is Kathleen Mackert, the president of Valerie Jeffs Mackert Gateway to Freedom, a nonprofit organization that helps individuals who want to escape polygamy and also those who want to escape domestic violence of any form. This organization also lobbies to improve laws for these survivors. Kathleen was born in a group that is now called the FLDS. That's an abbreviation for Fundamentalist Latter-day Saints, which was run by the notorious Warren Jeffs from the Yearning for Zion Ranch in El Dorado, Texas. Please welcome Kathleen Mackert. Thank you very much, Rebecca, and I really appreciate you giving me a t uh, some time on your show to have a voice in this important issue. We're very proud to have you here. Your father was featured in the September issue of Life magazine in 1953. Why was he selected? And how many wives and children did he have? Well, our father was, was Clyde Mackert, and he was a convert to polygamy. And um, he had three age-appropriate wives who were beautiful and educated, and so he was selected to be the poster family for polygamy in 1953 to uh, show how normal they were and that it was about freedom of religion when, in fact, it, the, the raid in 1953 was about abuse, the same reason that the raid in, in El Dorado, Texas happened. And um, they were used to whitewash the, the public opinion and turn the tide in favor of the polygamists, and it was very effective, and we saw the same um, tactics used following the raid in the Union for Zion Ranch. Within one week's time, the media came from asking questions like, are you upset that it took Texas four years to do anything to um, attitudes that they shouldn't have gone in at all? And they used these very effective tactics to, to turn the tide of public opinion and, and win their battle. And we've seen this historically. It's interesting that there has always been a poster family the Sister Wives, Cody Brown and his family on Sister Wives, should I call it reality or non-reality show? <laughs> For the same purpose. To me, it's more non-reality, yes. Yes. <laughs> but it is. it does serve the same purpose, Rebecca, and you're correct about that. And um, ironically, TLC, um, the producers contacted us and wanted to do um, a show prior to going with the polygamists. That, that would air about people that were getting out of it. But it's abusive to thrust people like that into the media spotlight when they can't even function in the outside world. And so we declined, and we will always decline publicity in, in lieu of helping victims people don't become understand. survivors. The public in general doesn't yeah. understand how difficult it is for someone to come out of a cult and arrange themselves in a life they never knew. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, our family's been living in polygamy for over 175 years from its very inception underneath Joseph Smith in the mainstream Mormon church. Our ancestor voted as part of a member of the First High Council to accept polygamy as a doctrine from God. And from that moment on, on our mother's side, polygamy has been lived for generation after generation for a hundred over 175 years. And when you're generationally raised that way, and that's all you ever know, um, it's very difficult to adapt to the outside world, much less when you've experienced the types of abuse that were going on in our family and many of the other families, including the leadership, where... Uh, children and daughters in particular are being sexually abused, oftentimes by their own father. That was the case with myself. There was physical abuse going on, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, and also what I call 
spiritual abuse because everything that was done to me was done in the name of God and salvation. So that is why I call it spiritual abuse. And when you come from an encapsulized, controlled world where even the food that you eat, the clothes that you wear, everything is controlled, it's much like, well, there have been studies done about um, people trying to adapt to life outside of a prison when they've lived most of their entire life in a prison setting where everything's dictated to them and they have a hard time functioning in the outside world. It's There's a parallel there and it's very definite that you get freedom and you don't know how to adapt. It's like being in an alien world and we had no freedom the same way as an inmate in a Mexican maximum security prison has no freedom. Do you feel that polygamy is abusive to women in general? Absolutely. And it's systemic it, because the reason it's systemic is it's an autocratic society. Now, an autocratic society is totally ruled by one person who orchestrates everything in their lives. And historically, whenever it is an autocratic society, there is abuse of, on many levels that happens. And it's impossible to have an autocratic society without abuse of being systemic within that society. And our experiences, the experiences of other survivors, they, they parallel and underline and emphasize that reality because um, Warren Jeffs, even when in his family, Marion Hammond, every one of the leaders has had reports from survivors of the sexual abuse and physical abuse going on, and it's preached from the pulpit that the, the physical abuse is. So you feel actually that there's more abuse than there is the so-called normal happy polygamous families. Do you think that the negative side is the reality in common more than the other side? Absolutely. And the thing is that they don't recognize abuse as abuse. To, I'll give an example. The, the doctrine that they teach from the, pro, from the pulpit is that you can beat a child nigh unto death for direct disobedience. And we heard that preaching our entire lives. So uh, that meant if I don't go to bed when Daddy tells me to, he can beat me to where I almost die. So when you have doctrine that teaches that that's okay and that's normal, then people grow up not viewing that as abuse. They view that as discipline. It's pretty heavy discipline. Yes, it is. And by any normal standard, other people would agree with that. But in that closed society, they don't recognize that as being abusive. We're trying to teach the child to learn to obey and submit to priesthood in everything in their lives. And so the children are ruled with, a, with an iron hand, and so are the wives, and so are the men. And it trickles down from the leadership. And that's what I mean by an autocratic society. Do you have family on the Yearning for Zion Ranch? Yes, we do. In fact, my sister Rena and I were scouring the, um, the Associated Press photographs following the raid, looking for family members, because when we left, there's, there's a great deal of our family that we haven't seen for some of them for over 30 years. And uh, we did find a photograph of our sister Carol on the ranch and it we just were flooded with emotion and erupted into tears at seeing that she was there. So for us it's very personal because we remember all the tales from our mothers and about the raid in fifty three. We and, and to know that she was down there going through that too, we can understand how traumatic it was for them, but we also understood how necessary it was for the children to be safe and to be rescued. The Yearning for Zion Ranch, the women were very, very cautious to even speak. They spoke without expression, without emotion, robotically, quietly withdrawn. Why did they do that? Well, that's the way they're taught to behave, that, that controlling your emotions was a doctrine that was, was preached and, and pounded into our minds from a very young age. And, and so women are supposed to maintain control. They're, the robotic 
Stepford wife kind of interview was because they were they were told what to say and they had to make sure that they did not say the wrong thing. So you have a very controlled society that literally will say whatever they're told to say in front of a camera because they're raised to lie to the outside world. So you get people who've been had victimized by mind control from the time that they're born, and you get these robotic responses. And um, that's what we saw in the interviews following the, the Young Design Ranch raid. You have been in this nonprofit organization that you created for quite a while. Can you tell us what caused you to form this nonprofit? You know, it was the events of the Union for Zion Ranch and, and realizing that when when the tide of public opinion turned and the, they were told that they had to return the children to the ranch, it was devastating because there was another generation that was lost. And and we wanted to have, have an avenue for people. Um, our organization is named after Valerie Justnackert, who was married to our brother. She was Warren Just's sister. And she was a beautiful, loving person whose smile lit up a room. And she died at the age of 40 because she couldn't fit in either world. And so she turned to drug abuse and alcoholism trying to cope, which is a typical coping mechanism for people who've gone through what survivors have gone through. And it did damage to her heart. So even though she was clean and sober when she died, that we believe, coupled with the fact that she had grand mal seizures, ended up costing her her life. So we don't want one person to lose their life trying to gain freedom. And our guest today is Kathleen Mackert. Kathleen is the president of the Valerie Jeffs Mackert Gateway to Freedom, a nonprofit organization. Kathleen, would you tell us about the lobbying you do and why you do it? 